So this is joint work with Wendy Yan Wu of Wilfrid Laurier University. This is my oldest paper that has not been published. So I, I, I think it's almost 12 years old since my first submission of this paper to a journal. <laughs> uh, and we've had several revisions and we're, we're in the second round of our revisions with the quarterly journal of finance and accounting all right now for this paper uh this is about uh the the feds bailout of the financial sector during the 2009 2010 financial crisis and in particular their support of the commercial paper market uh and so a lot of people so we did a lot of research uh, both me and wendy but other people too uh on the troubled asset relief program that program was supposed to be 700 billion dollars of money passed out but it wasn't it was far less than that and its biggest most controversial program was the capital purchase program which was only 205 billion of investments in banks uh, this is uh, over 700 billion i think it's 738 billion of investments in commercial paper. And this program was so popular with the Fed, it was repeated during the, the COVID crisis, although they only passed out less than 5 billion during the COVID crisis. So this is about the, the global financial crisis. And I, I probably, me and Wendy have probably between us at least written two dozen papers uh, about the global financial crisis and the, go the US government's response to it. Um, but this is the kind of the last one that we've written that is still out there. Um, let's see. Okay, so uh, this is the only study to look at the characteristics of participants and non-participants in this program. And so, uh, me and Wendy have done a lot of research on like who participated in these programs and I've done some work with myself and also with uh, other authors uh, about who participates in these kind of bailout programs. Uh, but there's not been any look at, uh, you know, who are the commercial paper issuers and who are the commercial paper issuers who who uh, sold their commercial paper to the Fed, right? Uh, and so the Federal Reserve, the US Central Bank. And so the, and I think there's a reason for that because it was really hard to do. <laughs> and, and that's something that uh, me and Wendy have kind of struggled with uh, is that, uh, you know, it was very hard to, to draw a sample selection criteria. And we did our best to, to, to draw in as many potential uh, commercial paper issuers as possible into our sample selection criteria, but it still was not, uh, it didn't, didn't absorb everybody in the commercial paper market. So we had kind of three uh, criteria uh, to start out with. If they were on this list, this uh, S&P list, this Lehman list and this commercial paper working group list, we put them in the sample of potential people that could get a Fed bailout. Uh, and then the other one was, uh, but I know the folks at the Fed don't like to call it a bailout. Uh, the other one was, uh, you know, did these people report on their accounting statements that they had some commercial paper liabilities, that they, they had issued some commercial paper, so they had a positive amount. So if either one of those things were true, they would be in the sample. And so the other thing that they needed to have was they needed to have at least assets reported on CompuStat. That is, they're, they're fine. So that CompuStat does uh, accounting, uh, aggregates accounting uh, across a lot of country, uh, companies. We use CompuStat both global and North America because this was a global program, which also made it harder <laughs> to do the paper because 
the accounting treatments are a little bit different for the global companies versus the North American companies. And uh, that some, in some ways limited the amount of inferences we could draw about things, but about the accounting ratios. But we, we drew some, and I think even though the folks that work at the Fed and they get, get paychecks from the Fed because they're research scholars or they're, they're actually full-time workers at the Fed, which maybe most of the PhDs in finance and economics in the US, if not most, they're the biggest employer of them. Uh, the, uh, uh, they will be happy that we found that they were not snookered by these issuers, that they, they actually uh, did, not, were, did not fall victim to adverse selection problems. And so the folks at the Fed should take heart that we got insignificant results when it came to accounting ratios because that means they did not fall victim to the adverse selection problem. We also didn't find them any less liquid than people who did not participate in the Fed's program, the issuers that did participate. Uh, but we did find the ones that did participate tended to be bigger. That, and so uh, the systemic risk hypothesis is gonna get some support. Uh, the foreign issuers were less likely to participate uh, and financial issuers were more likely to participate. All right, so we're not, I'm not gonna go through every table because we have a lot of tables. Uh, but, uh, you know, summary stats gives us an idea. So uh, we have a dummy variable, y equals one, if you're, you participated or not. Uh, there are two types of commercial paper. There's, um, there's commercial paper which is not asset backed, which is a liability of the corporation. And then there's commercial paper, which is asset backed, which is not a liability of the corporation, uh, but it was the, the asset backed entity was sponsored by the corporation. And one of the reasons I'm not showing you the tables for the asset backed regressions is because they were mostly insignificant which is what we would expect, because if it's not a liability of the corporation, then corporate ratios and corporate characteristics shouldn't matter. It should be what's in the special purpose entity. Uh, and then, uh, let's see, uh, if they participate in the S&P index, that was kind of the bigger, more systemically important. Uh, commercial paper issuers, if they had more issues on the S&P index of commercial paper, then they were more important. Um, we have dummies for, dummies typically are going to say yes, one, no, zero. Uh, so dummy for financial, if they, they took TARP, which is the, the Treasury's bailout during the 2008 financial crisis, that was the one that was really controversial in the United States back in the day years ago uh, and then uh, we've got uh, accounting ratios for so assets is not a ratio uh, but that's also a sign of systemic risk um, we have ratios for book common equity and total assets uh, return on equity return on assets uh, short-term debt divided by book common equity short-term debt divided by total assets total assets in 2008 and we'd redo all those stats for the 2008 data because, you know, some of the at some some of those people that entered the program, all the the Fed had to work from was the, the 2007 data, uh, and you know some of them that entered the program kind of late, then maybe the Fed could have looked at the 2008 data. They didn't have to according to the program. They probably did not do that according to the program. But we want to just get an idea. Who were these people, who were these issuers, these companies that did this? And I guess the other thing with this is that this program is not just open to companies. So I'll, I'll show you uh, if I can find table one of the paper. If I can scroll down fast enough. It's been a big learning curve to use this laptop. Okay. All right, so 
right? The participants, a lot of these companies that participated in this program or a lot of these issuers that were not companies, right? Some of them were like governments, right? Um, so it was like the government of Korea issued commercial paper to this program. Um, the Free State of Bavaria, right? Uh, a credit union, right? So the credit union is not going to show up in CompuStat. I guess we could have drawn credit union data, but I don't think there are that many credit unions that uh, have, you know, I don't think there's that many credit unions out there uh, that issue commercial paper. Uh, so they're, they're uh, okay, so that's, uh, so that if we just look at participation in, in the, the commercial paper funding facility and we just do a t-test of means, right, uh, who participated, who didn't. Uh, and this is for financial companies only. So this is a subset of the sample, just the financial companies. Uh, then we see support uh, for the systemic risk hypothesis, some support for uh, TARP recipients being more likely to participate, foreign issuers less likely to participate. Um, larger total assets, so that supports the systemic risk. But then we don't see uh, like the return on equity. They're not very. They're either insignificant or not strongly significant. Uh, we do see kind of uh, short-term debt divided by book common equity is significant. Uh, make more likely to participate. That might be associated with adverse selection, but that falls out when we do the regression analysis. Uh, and then we see the total assets also showing up in 2008. Okay. Okay, so the non-financials, that was a relatively limited set. You know, we don't have a lot of non-financials that participated, uh, and we don't have a lot of significant results here because they're, they're just not that much, many observations. So, I mean, I think that the, the thing is that these are very diverse organizations that issued commercial paper. And so the inferences we can draw are not super strong. Um, so I think we saw that already. Let's see what. Uh, so this is the this is the non the financial firms uh, for non asset backed commercial paper only. We kind of get similar results as for just financial firms for not asset backed and non asset backed. Okay, so this is the full sample here, uh, where we've got um, logistic regression to the likelihood of CPFF participation. Uh, I think the thing is that there's there's support in these regressions. So model one, two, three, these top numbers here, those are all things that would be associated with the systemic risk hypothesis and supporting the systemic risk hypothesis. That the more important issuers tended to participate in the commercial paper funding facility program. Uh, and then the we see some some uh, positive and significant results uh, in most of the, the models for financial firms participating, uh, more likely to participate. Uh, and then uh, only in one regression do we see some significance to the, the common equity ratio. And uh, so there's not a lot so there's kind of support for financial firms. Uh, there's support for foreign firms being less likely to participate. Foreign financial firms more likely to participate. Foreign firms less likely to participate and support for the systemic risk hypothesis. But the adverse selection hypothesis doesn't really have much support, nor does the screening hypothesis.
Okay. Um. So this is a subsample of just the financial firms, right? Uh, and let's see, we have the, the TARP dummy here. Uh, it seems like it's covered up by, I can't see right here because of the, the, the quirks of Zoom. Let's see if I can make this, there we go. Um, Oh, there we go. Okay. Uh, yeah, so it seems insignificant in all those specifications, right? So it doesn't hold up in the regression results that if you, you took the Treasury's bailout, you were more likely to take uh, the, the, uh, the bailout from the Fed, right? So there's not a significant association. Uh, and then we have, we're using the 2008 data. Again, we seem to have like, financials are more likely to participate, foreign firms less likely to participate, more systemically risky firms are more likely to participate. Uh, but the counting ratios, uh, not really significant in most specifications. Uh, and then 2008 data for non-asset backed commercial paper, right? So we have the TARP dummy again here for this subsample. It's only significant in one regression. It's positive and significant like the t-test, like the hypothesis, you're more likely to participate in TARP, but it's not super strong, doesn't hold up in most models that we present. So, you know, probably the best result thing to say is that yeah you're not significantly more likely to be participate uh, in the commercial paper funding facility if you participated in TARP uh, when controlling for other factors right so that would be my take on that but you are if you're sy more systemically important in the commercial paper market as measured by total assets or by uh, you know whether you're in the S and P index uh, for commercial paper, then you're more likely to participate. And if you're a financial firm, you're more likely to participate. And if you're a foreign firm, you're less likely to participate. Uh, so those are the results I have here. Um, any questions?